This video file is recorded in Sabanj University during the recitations for the CS201 Introduction to Computing course as it was given in the fall 2016 semester. We are, we are back again. Now we are going to see the last example and it's the most important one. That's why pay attention because you are going to do the coding for this one, okay? I'm going to do it also but you are going to do it also. So, and you don't have to open anything. Everything is here. Or better, let me, let me tell you, let me show to you the <coughs> exe file of our next example. So, it's about something like this. You purchase something from internet, or whatever, anyway. You bought something, but you're not, you won't pay right now. You say, okay, I'm gonna pay for it. Let's say you have some bills, whatever. You're going to pay about it later on, but you have penalty about that. If you pay one month later, there is some penalty about it, which is, let's say, 2.5%. So if the price is 1,000, you pay penalty of 2.5% each month, okay? This is how the program should work. Okay, so we are entering our information. Uh, I'm entering my name, I'm Artrim. Last name. Day, month, year. I bought it today. Let's say it's 13th of October 2016. And I'm giving those as input. Day, month, year. Amount. The amount is $1,000. The interest. The interest, the monthly interest is 2.5%. Okay, and this is what I get. I'm printing the date here, and I'm saying, Dear Artrim Chamili, our records show a balance of $1,000 as of 13th of October 2016. In order to avoid blah, 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 you should pay until, I mean, I should pay this bill until 13th of, 11, 13th of November 2016, meaning that I have a deadline of one month only. If I don't do that, I will be charged with penalty, with monthly penalty of 2.5%. Meaning that if I pay 30 days late, later after that date, I'm going to pay 1,025. Why? Because the amount is 1,000, the interest is 2.5%, and 2.5% of 1,000 is 25. If I should pay 60 days later, I'm going to pay 1,050. Why? Because two months with interest of 2.5, when the amount is 1,000, it's 50 more dollars, so it's 1,050. 90 days later is this much. Best regards, CS201 Corporation. Your job is to write the code about this program. And you're going to get the activity Basically, the most important part, the most important activity you can make today is to write the code for this particular program, okay? Now, you will have like 20, 25 minutes to do it. I'm going to run it again for those that just came, that were late. And I want to give you some clues. So basically, again, remember this one. So I entered the date, today's date, and I should pay one month later, at most, 13th of November 2016. Otherwise, I have penalty. Let me run it again and see what's happening. So, let's say that I purchase the item on 25th of December 2016. 
okay? The amount is again 1,000 and the interest is 2.5%. Now, if I bought the item on 25th of December 2016 and I should pay it one month, that will be which date? I bought it on 25th of December 2016 and I should pay it one month later, which is 25th of January, which date, which year? 2017, okay? So you should pay attention about this one, okay? So the due date is always the same, but pay attention with the month. If it's 12, it's going to be one. If it's 2000, this is 12, it will be one, and the year will be increased by one, okay? So this is what your input should, the output should be. I'm printing this letter, basically, okay? Dear customer, uh, your rec our record shows a balance of $1,000 as of this date, okay? I should pay it until 25th of January 2017. Otherwise, you have a monthly penalty of 2.5%. And this is how we, we, call, we calculate the penalty. Basically, again, I'm repeating it for those that, that are late. 1000 is the price that we should pay. The interest is 2.5% on monthly basis. So 2.5% of 1,000 is 25. So for one month, I should pay 25 more, $25 more. For two months, 60 days, I should pay $50 more, and so on. For three months, I'm paying this much. Now, I want you to use functions. And I'm going to give you some hints about which functions you should use. Can you see? In this output, starting from here till the end, is there anything that is being repeated? Just raise your hand. Yes? Okay, this part, this part is being repeated, okay? That's why, for this part, you should use a function, okay? But you should send the parameter. If it's 30, it's this much. If it's 60, it's this much. Basically, you're going to calculate it. But Again, one function to calculate and print those lines, okay? And you're going to call it three times. Is there something else repeated in this recipe, in this letter? Yes or no? Just check it. What do we repeat else? The date. We have the date here. We have the date here. We have the date here also. Yeah, there are different dates, but you should write a function that as a parameter you send the day, the month, and the year, and it's going to print it, okay? This is it. Can you do it? Is 25 minutes enough for you? You can try it. We are going to write it in a while. But, yeah, try it. Okay, let's run the code again. Now, let's give some output that makes no sense. Like, okay, the name, it makes sense. The surname, it makes sense. But what about this one? 25th of the 26th month, 2016. The amount is minus $500. The interest is, let's say, 3.9. I forgot CNC ignore here again. Let me write it. CN ignore. CN get. Okay. Now let's give inputs that make no sense. This makes sense. The name and the surname. There are no restrictions. But this one, let's say 35th month is the 17th month and 2016. The amount is minus 700. The interest is 3.9. And we have this letter. 
So it, it makes no sense to have uh, bills with negative values. We don't get it. Now we see that there are some errors here. Not uh, syntax error, but there are logical errors. Basically, we have to put some constraints when we give our input. And which are those constraints? Some mistakes. Or better said, constraints. One, does it make sense that we should pay a negative amount of money? No, that's why. Amount shouldn't be smaller or equal to zero. Or, said in other words, amount, if the amount is smaller or equal to zero, then it's a mistake. So we are trying to find the mistakes, and if we find mistakes, we shouldn't print the letter. The first one is this one. The second one. It doesn't make sense for the day to be smaller than one. So we have day smaller than one. Or the day to be greater than 31. Also, Something similar applies for the months. The month that we give as an input shouldn't be smaller than one, or the month shouldn't be greater than 31. Actually, this is what we are trying to say. If the month is smaller than one, or the month is greater than 31, that we don't have to print the letter. Fourth. About the year, we don't have constraint about the years. Yeah, we can put it that it cannot be smaller than zero, but we can leave it in that way. And we don't want to bother with that for the time being. For leap years, or not for leap years, for the second month. If the month is February, and we all know that February never has 30 days, so if the month is two, this is equally equal. And, not or. And, and we write and like this in C++ as we saw it. The day is equal to 30, and we have a mistake. Okay? If we have those kind of mistakes, we shouldn't let the computer, the, the program to print our letter. So how are we going to fix it? Let's go with, let's go finding those mistakes, those logical errors, those inputs that makes no sense. Okay, the first one is amount shouldn't be if the amount, and I'm going to put parentheses because we still don't know what the precedence is. If the amount is smaller or equal to zero, then there is a mistake. What else? If the day is smaller than one, or the day is greater than 31, it's also a mistake. Furthermore, if the month, so we are trying to find the mistakes with this if statement, if the month is smaller than one, and if the month is greater than 31, it's a mistake. And also, if the month is equal to two, or end. The month and the day is equal to 30, or greater than 30. It should be greater here, not equal. Greater or equal than thir to 30, or greater than 29, it's the same. So if the day is greater or equal to 30, then we have a mistake. Now let's concentrate in this part here. 
If the day is smaller than 1, 0, minus 1, minus 5, and so on, it's a mistake. But also it's a mistake if I give an input as 32, 35, and so on. So that's why I have here OR. One of them is true, we have a mistake. An input that doesn't make sense. The same applies for the month. It should be here 12. Let me correct it. Okay, but here we have AND. Since the month can be 2, yeah. The day can be equal to 30, but not, not greater than 30. We add it here. But the day can be equal to 30. But if the month is equal to 2 and simultaneously at the same time, both should be true, and the day is greater or equal to 30, then we have a mistake. Even since the day is equal to greater than 30, meaning 31 and so on, it's covered here. We should write here only equal to 30 or 31, but this also makes sense. I mean, let's not complicate our statements. So we can write here, if the month is equal to 2 and the day is equal to 30, or the day is equal to 31, it's a mistake, but I'm not going to complicate it for, for the time being. Now, the question is the following. We have four different statements about logical errors about inputs that makes no sense. What should we put here? We don't want to print the letter, but we want to print a message like this. So, if we have input errors, I can say invalid input, the letter is not going to be printed. The letter will not be printed. Else, I'm going to copy, to drag and drop this line here, this command, and I'm going to print the letter accordingly. Now, you see that there's a logical error going on because of those red dashes. The problem is the following. All those statements that we have seen, so statement number one is that amount shouldn't be great if the amount is smaller or, or equal to zero. It's input error, in, invalid input. This one also. This is another statement. And this is another statement. So all of those four statements, if only one of them is true, if only one of them happens, then we should print this one. So the day might be okay. The date might be the fifth, the month might be the sixth, and we don't have any problem with the day, the month, but if the amount is negative, we should print this, this message, basically. So basically, in order to print this message, only one of those sentences of those statements should be true, and this rings a bell. That means that we are dealing with a logical OR. That's why, let's put a logical OR here. We have OR here. And you see, this is going to disappear now. It's going here. We have logical OR here. And this is it. This is for the main bracket. Of course, we wrote it like this so you, it's more readable. But usually you don't have ifs like that. Of course, you can do it if you want. We can make it look something like this. So if you are not sure, because sometimes if you don't put brackets, parentheses, and so on, uh, you have different statements here and you don't know whether this one equal equal is going to be executed first or this one or 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 the end is going to be executed first if you're not sure put parentheses we will see in a while the precedent the precedence 
the priorities, which one is going to be executed if you don't put parentheses. But if you're not sure about it, just put brackets, just put parentheses. Now let's run the code. Uh, we should also have, just let me find it. Okay, here it is. So here, I'm not going to exit this one. I'm going to give some input that makes no sense. And I'm going, this is with before compiling. Okay, so these are the inputs that makes no sense. 25th of 26 and blah, 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 and March and whatever. But now, Let's run it again, mm, or better. I'm going just to copy the exe and put it here. I'm not going to need this one, but I will need this one here. Let me adjust the font again. Again, I'm giving the name. I'm not giving the surname. The date that makes no sense, 2016, the amount, minus 600, the interest, 2.5, and this is what I get. Now, I'm going to run the code again with those modifications that we did that shouldn't allow invalid input. That's why we checked them with the if clause and logical ors. So, if I give something like 25th of 60th of 2016, and the amount is minus 500, and the interest is 2.5, uh, where's the mistake? Did I? Okay, I should compile it from scratch again. No, I'm compiling the newly changed code. So 25th, 60, 2016, minus 500, 2.5. Invalid input, the letter will not be printed. It's because of the month here and because of the amount minus 500. Even if one of them was given as wrong and everything else is correct as an input, there are imp those are inputs that make sense, it still wouldn't work. We can try it, so let's give everything correct. My name is A, my surname is B, the year is 25th, the date is 25th of October 2016, and minus 600, so everything is okay. The interest is okay. But still, because of this amount, I cannot print it. I can change the date also, the day, the month, to be as invalid, and it's not going to be printed. OK, so far, so good. This makes sense. You might complain, or uh, you might say, OK, there, uh, there are some months like January, it has 31 days, and, and April, it has 30 days, but we can give it as the th if for April, if for April, April 31 is going to be accepted. It's a mistake. Yeah, you're right, but we want to. I don't want to engage in those kind of details. You can try it at your home later on. Now let's go with something else. This is main, and main prints uh, calls the function called print ladder. So we go here. We are printing. And we are writing this function, and this function, as you can see, calls this function here, print date. Now, usually, programmers do the following thing. Let's just copy paste print date and put it immediately after main. Let's delete it. Okay. Let's go to the print letter. There's a mistake. Yeah. Okay. Let's comment this out. 
Now, I don't have any logical error, any syntax error, I mean any dashes, but if I try to compile this piece of code, this is what I get, an error. Let's see what kind of error. I, s I get an error which says print date is unidentified, it's not found. Which print date? This one here is not found. Although I have written my code just after main, print date is here, the, the compiler works the following, the following way. It starts from main, always it starts from main, and it goes. If we should call the print letter, then it calls the print letter, but you see print letter should be defined before main, and is here. And print letter calls print date, but print date is not defined, not, neither written or declared before print letter, it's not here. That's why we have a mistake. Although we have written print date after main, it should be written, declared, or at least declared before print date, before it is called, a certain function. Now we can do the following thing. So we saw the mistake, but if we do something like this, we put semicolon, we run the program again, we can see that we can run it, we don't have any error, runtime error. So here is what it means, that print date, with this line of code here basically, we are telling to the compiler the following thing, that hey, uh, if you need to call the print date function as it's the case here, yeah, don't worry, you will have it afterwards, so don't throw a mistake, don't, don't say that it's a mistake if I don't have it right now, okay? Uh, meaning, this is called the declaration of a function. It just tells to the compiler that the function, which is called print date, is going to be defined later on. I'm now just declaring it. This is called a prototype function. Print letter calls print date, but also it calls print penalty. And you see print penalty is defined before print date. So if I do the same thing, if I copy or cut it, and I put it after main, and if I try, you see, before, let's comment this out. Before commenting it out, I don't, it didn't have any mistake, but now I have a mistake. Print penalty, print penalty. Okay, because print penalty doesn't exist. It's undefined. Yes, it's undefined. Now, because it's commented out, I'm going to uncomment it. I don't have this mistake anymore. But if I run it, if I try to execute it, compile it, this is the, from the previous time when, when it was working. Do you want to run this last successful build? No. I have print penalty is not defined three times. But if I write something like this, void print penalty, and what do I have here? Print penalty, this is of type uh, in, uh, integer, this is double, and the number of months is also integer. So I have integer, double, and integer again. Semicolon. It's very important to put them. I'm also declaring a function and basically telling to the compiler, don't worry. If you should call the print penalty function somewhere in the code, I will, it will be defined after main and don't throw a mistake. Don't say that it's a mistake. So if you try to run the code again, it's working without any errors. I'm not going to execute it because it's basically the same. And why we are doing this stuff? Because many programmers, the way they compile, the way they, their style is like that, basically, when they write their codes, they don't want to deal with things that are straightforward, like printing the date. I mean, it's only one C out. So they want to focus on something which is more important. In our case, it's the print letter function. And afterwards, after writing print letter function, they're going to write the print date, since it's less important. So far, so good.